Thank you. Very much. Let's catch my breath a little bit. Good friend of mine out there at CK. Um, okay, with, with that solo, a lot of. I'm really a big fan of uh, different styles of music. Uh, grew up in the rock. Um, I was a big fan of KISS growing up, and I was like, God, oh, that's what I want to do. So I was drum solo and didn't take lessons. And I just learned through friends how to play a drum beat. And, you know, I was able to work my way through those records. And then Neil Peart had to come along and ruin everything for me <laughs> in Rush. And so I was like, what in the world? I just, you know, what is this guy doing? How is that possible? And a friend of mine was like, oh, that's a lot of that stuff he's doing is uh, rudiments. Uh, and I was like, R -r 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 -r, you know, learn what rudiments were. Uh, so lessons can be a big helper. You know, you don't have to learn to read music. You don't have to play rudiments to be a successful musician, but it'll help. Uh, the guys that don't do that, I don't understand how they can. But it's, it's such a, a benefit to take lessons to, to further that process. I feel like I could have quickened you know, my time span and not wasted a lot of time just jamming the songs that I knew to play. Um, so with this solo, um, I became a huge fan of the rudiments. Um, and I use one particularly a lot. Um, it's a six stroke roll um, and drags. And I'm gonna, I'll demonstrate some of those. Uh, the paradiddles, awesome rudiment. Um, double stroke rolls. And for me, a lot of times if I'm stuck, there's always that the six stroke roll. It's like, that kind of helps me get out and kind of gather my thoughts, okay, I need to go here. So let me show you uh, just a little demonstration of the six stroke roll. Um, and it's built around triplets. Um, the sticking is right, left, left, right, right, left. Six notes. So let me just show you. And there's an accent on the first and last note. I continue it again. So if you count that, there's different ways. One ta ta, and ta ta, one ti ta, and ti ta. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the six, you can, it makes you sound cooler than you are, basically. And you can, you can kind of move it around to different uh, sound sources on the drum. So that one, I just I tend to, I have to catch myself and go, okay, you've already played that eight billion times, go to something different. Um, another one, the paradiddle. The basic character on right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Great because it's building a weaker hand. So I'm a righty, so the left hand is still trying to wake up after 30 years of playing. Always trying to do stuff. The paradiddle helps because it's kind of a mirror image exercise. So if you can make that into a drum. putting some accents and ghost notes, so it gives it more depth. Uh, and one that I really like is you, you can invert the paradiddle and get right, left, 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 right, right, left. I think I said that right. <laughs> so you got it. And I'm putting that on the, the drum as well, so. Right, left, left, right, left. Six 
stroke at the end of that again. So with rudiments, you know, you can really take your playing to another level. Um, and ghost notes, huge. Ghost notes really can make a, a drum beat come alive. You know, if I'm playing, like say everyone play, that plays the drums probably knows the boom of the drum beat. If I kind of put some ghost notes in that, and get a lot of ghost notes are another big. I, I really play use a lot in my playing. Um, some of the other styles I like. I love the Latin styles, and that for drum solos I think works so good. Because the rhythms are so like danceable, um, and they're, they're just different, obviously, than the U.S. beat. You know, the way they're orchestrated with the hands is just—it's almost like a little uh, ensemble percussion section playing. Um, one rhythm I play in there is called the Wawonka. Um, the way it's taught in a book, a lot of times you're playing. Uh, they'll teach like on the side of the floor tom. a little bit more, so I'll throw it on a cabin or a floor tunnel. But those, do, those are, work real well on the drum solo. Uh, Mozambique, another great one, which would be this. Should have had some papers, you know, if anybody here is like interested, like what is the sticking on that? Come up to me afterwards and we'll, I'll write it down on a napkin if we have to. Excuse me, but it's a great drum beat. And there's a lot of variations with the Mozambique. You can cover a lot of ground in your drum solo where people are like, wow, that was just so cool. Um, Steve Gadd, if anybody's familiar with him, he really made this popular um, with Paul Simon in a song called Late in the Evening. And that goes like this. So that's a real, that's such a cool beat. So you can kind of, I can take that basic version and kind of play around with it. With that, and then another one that has this left hand thing that's kind of going in this circular motion. Yeah, that right hand knows in So a lot of times in my solos, I'll, you know, if I get to a point, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this Latin section and I'll just throw all those together. Um, and when I've been in, it's really cool because I've noticed like any time that I'm with a band where I get to use a drum solo. And when I use the Mozambique, like the double bass, everyone, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's all rocking up. But every time I've gone into those rhythms, I just hear people really kind of really digging it. Um, White Cross, my wife's going to get me after this time. Don't say so many hums every time you speak. Now I notice every time I do. Uh, White Cross is a band I've played with since 92, and we've um, been to a lot of places, and in like the Latin countries. I was kind of nervous to play that because I figured everyone there just knows those beats like down. So I'm like this gringo coming over there playing their stuff, you know. But man, they just, they went crazy for it too. So I've gotten a lot of mileage out of, the, out of those Latin beats. Uh, there's the Bossa Nova, uh, another one that's a really good beat to know. There's like after six, eight feeling. Just the, get into like different styles. Get into some Latin stuff. Get into jazz. You don't have to be 
the best jazz player, the best Latin player, but working with all those styles is gonna make your style that much better, who you are. Uh, and one, I remember a drummer named Nathaniel Townsend that I saw, there's a convention called Drummers for Jesus, and it's really cool what he said, he goes, uh, nobody can play like you. Uh, I just thought that was such a killer statement, because they can, no one can play like you play. Uh, so, so, I don't keep chatting. I think Ryan is going to bring up some, some other players. Yeah, well we were starting off kind of, just so everybody knows our format, we were going to talk about drum solo stuff, because Michael obviously can play some drum solos. Anybody think he did a good job? Yeah. 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 He asked me if we wanted to play something together, and I said, no, that's right, you just play. <laughs> and, uh, so we're, we're starting off, we're talking about the drum solo kind of thing. Some people hate drum solos and think it's a waste of time. Some people are like, get to the drum solo. You know, that's the, that's the part of the show. So it's one of those things, some people like it, some people don't, you know. I think they're cool. Um, and that's kind of one of the things I want him to talk about and share about. And what I got from that was, when you're, when you're doing drum solos, you, you mix it up with rudiments, different rudiments, but then also you're, you mix in styles. Yeah. So you have style things and rudiment things. Yeah, styles and like me and Ryan were talking, earlier. And one thing just, I'm sure like all you drummers know that, that kind of stuff is not going to get you a gig. You're not going to put food on your table playing a cool drum solo. It's about, you've got to have the groove, you've got to have, you got to be able to play with other musicians and just lay that foundation down. And I, I learned that kind of a hard way. I, like I said, when I was under rush and I was trying to play all these billion fills and I auditioned for a, a band when I got out of high school that was touring. It would have been a, a nice gig for some of my age at that time. And I learned the songs, but then I'm like, I'm gonna blow them away and I'm gonna put all these crazy fills. And it was me and a, a girl that was auditioning for vocals and at the end, the leader said, I'll take the girl, not him. And I was like, I couldn't, I was like, I don't understand. You know? The bass player was like, yeah, dude, you were playing all this over the singer everywhere. So I was like, okay, note to self, don't do that. Get the foundation when it's time, if you get time for a drum solo, then do it. So, but yeah, back to the, the drum solo should have, you know, like we were saying, a story. You know, you kind of build, you want to have like a beginning, middle, and then you know, the grand finale at the end. And I, that's what I do. I like to throw in rudiments, styles, uh, double bass stuff, uh, show, spinning, you know, just kind of make it fun. Because the drummer's always in the back, no one gets to see him too much. <laughs> 